So we're throwing the teapot. Get your clay centered. You guys can ask me questions as we go along. Otherwise, I just assume you know what we're doing. I have a question for you. Yes. Once you cone up and bring it back down. Yes. If you're centered, is there a reason to cone it up more nope. than once? No. Nope. Okay, so now we're pretty well centered, so we can open up the mats. So because my hand, I'm going to have a hard time pushing down in here, my hand doesn't reach far enough. This is the way I um, open up a mass that's bigger. So it's similar to the plate demo I've shown you guys. I'm just going to use my hand like this, my fist. Bring it back to the four o'clock position. Open it up. It's almost like the plate. It is, like I just said, it's very similar to opening up the plate. So then we want to measure how thick we have it here. And so it's about a half an inch, which is perfect for this. We want to Compress the clay towards the center so we don't get an S crack later. Okay. I'm going to recenter this edge because it's gone a little cattywampus from opening it. So I'm putting my hand here at the 7 o'clock position, my left hand pushing in, push down with the right hand. Wheel speed full so that it gets it back on center. Now we're ready to start pulling up the sides. So come over to the 4 o'clock position, slow down the wheel a little bit, and you're pulling upwards. And because I intend to eventually come in in the middle, I'm trying to keep it cylindrical and not flaring it out like I would with a bowl. Add a little water at the top with your sponge. Get the water out of the base so that you don't have a swimming pool. Elephant ear sponges are best for this. I'm going to pull up again. Put a little more pressure on the outside hand so you can start bringing it inwards. Let's get to the top. Level it off a little bit at the top. I'm going to take the rib, the wooden rib, go to the four o'clock position and get rid of some of this excess clay, undercut, and then take your tool like this, cut down. If you try to remove that now, it will re-stick to the pot. So what you have to do is create a little moat with water so that now when you cut away, it comes away very cleanly and it won't really stick to the pot. How thick are your walls now? Um, I'll tell you in a minute. Down here is still a little bit thick, and then as I come up, it's still a little bit thick up here, so I'm going to pull one more time. So it's thicker than a half an inch right now. So I'm going to pull. Actually, this time when I do it, I'm going to push out with the inside hand to shape it a little bit. Take advantage of the weight that I have there to get a little bit more of a shape. So I'm going to push out. So the wheel always has to go much slower when you're shaping. And you want to leave it a little bit thicker on the top too up here so that when you put a flange in it, it's not going to be too thin. Now, 
one? Yes, question. I think one is going to look like a tomato, and I was going to throw it and then absolutely close it off, and then yes. carve off the top. I mean, like, open it up and get out of the uh -huh. tomato heart. Uh -huh. Is that possible, or is it not? No, you can do that. You just keep compressing and pulling up. Collar it in again. Pull it up. So I'm going to pull it up one more time because it's still a little bit thick. So I want to make sure my hand is slipping over the surface so I'm adding water to the top and distributing it over the surface on the inside and the outside is already well lubricated. So again, pulling up. And I'm going to do this with a sponge in my hand just to show you that's another technique that you can do for pulling up. You can also, this is a good trick, like students have told me in the past, oh, my hands keep sticking or my hands dry out, the clay gets too hot. So if you use a sponge in your hand, you'll find that it alleviates a lot of those problems. So when we get to the top, we leave it thick right up here. It's a lot like the cookie jar. It is like a lot like a cookie jar at this point. When you get the water out of the inside, it's not good to leave the water in the bottom for any length of time. Because remember, water is placed where it's been and it'll start to um, degrade the bottom of the pot. Okay, so now for a flange. So I'm going to press down to thicken this top rim. In the front too. And you can also do this with a chamois. It will help you to thicken this room at the top. It does look like a cookie jar, doesn't it? Okay, so you really want to thicken this top part up, and then we're just going to bend it. Over and inwards. So the left hand is supporting it as you do this. And you can further define it with your fingers or with a needle tool. You can come back in and using not the point end, but this end of the needle tool, you can help define that just a little bit more. Take your chamois on this inside part and thicken it up because it gets a little skinny in there. You don't want it to be too thin right there because then when you reach your hand in later to clean the teapot, it's going to be like a razor blade edge there that will hurt you. All right, finish shaping the outside. And then what we want to do is we want to measure this interior part so that in part two of this video you're going to see the making of the lids. So we just want to measure that so that we have the corresponding part over here, over here, that we will make, use to make the lid in a few minutes. Cut the, um, undercut the bottom of it and then wire through and we'll see you in part two.